Tim O'Kelly here. Got a question for you. Do dogs love bones? Think about that. Okay, not too much. But think about it for a second. Um, I got a topic right now, one of my favorite topics, and, uh, and, th and that's about settling. Okay, I, I got to touch on this. It's, it's all around me right now. People around me, conversations around me. I got to touch on it, okay? So uh, before I do that, just a little bit of my history. If you don't know me, you can always read, uh, or not read, but watch the, uh, the bio the, uh, my tells my story on video up top. Um, but basically, I've been doing personal development more for 25 years. I absolutely love it. I will die doing it. It is my passion. Anything that we can do to have a better life, anything that we can learn and do something different that produces a different result, that's what I get a kick out of. Uh, not only turn it on to people all over the country, all over Canada, speaking to thousands of people for 25 years, for my kids, for my wife, for my family, for my associates, just anybody practicing, hey, I did something different and let me show you the result. That's exciting. I'm a freak about that. So that's what I do. And so this topic right here, um, and I want to I want to bring a story in with it here that I just want to if I can pass it on and cause someone to think and, and make a different choice in the future then that's what it was worth it and the idea behind this about the dogs right do dogs love bones well if you look at it from the surface yeah I throw a bone out dog goes crazy over the bone well let's just stop and challenge that let's just take a look at it so here's one way to do it get a t-bone steak. Okay, cut the bone out of the T-bone, right, steak. Put the bone on one plate. Put the steak on another plate. Put them on the floor. Let your dog in and see who gets together. It's going to be the dog and the steak. Dogs love steak. They'll get excited about a bone. They will. They'll even find, hey, this one's got a little bit of fat on it. Look over here, it's got a little bit of meat on the end of it. They'll get excited about it, but guess what they love? They love steak. But then why do they get so excited about bones? Well, because maybe that's all they've been given, and it's a hell of a lot better than dry dog food. But is it what they really want? Is it what they really love? No. But then they'll actually, over time, start getting excited about that bone. And I'm asking you to look at the same thing for us. Settling. That part of us that says it's okay, and I actually get excited about something that I don't really want but i've got to in my mind say that this is good and we lie to ourselves. okay so how how do you know if you challenge how do you know if you how do you know if you do this how do you know if you settle that's going to be an internal question you've got to st struggle with yourself but i want to share a story and and you know i shared this the other day in a class of 500 people and that story had a huge impact on people and i want to share it again and you know what it's very possible that a version of this story is on another YouTube video that I made. I'm thinking it might be, but it's really strong in me right now, and I think this version might even be better than the other one that's out there. So, when I was young, and I was um, watching movies back then, a little boy, my mom and I would go watch movies. And I saw a movie with Steve McQueen in it, and it was The Great Escape. And I watched this movie, I I've seen this movie I don't know how many times, but there's a scene in there where, you know, he, he, he breaks out. A bunch of them break out. And he's riding a motorcycle, right? And he's, he's riding through the fields of Germany or something. I don't even remember where this scene was. And, you know, the other police are chasing him. And he jumps this fence, you know, and, he, and he, he's just, at one point he's just stopping. He's on this beautiful motorcycle. And I remember as a little kid just going, I don't know what it is about that, but I love that. That picture was sizzled in my brain of this guy who I liked, and he's on this beautiful motorcycle, okay? So as I go, though, I started getting motorcycles because I loved it, right? And so I had in my mind always, I don't know what bike that is. I don't know what, who owned, I mean, who, uh, who made it. I don't know any of that, but I always had that picture in my mind. And then about, I'm going to say six months ago, maybe eight months ago, I'm driving to the airport, and I've, I've left earlier than I needed to, so I've got like an hour extra time. I'm like, what can I do? What should I do? I don't want to go sit at the airport. And I had this little voice inside of me. You know that little voice I'm talking about. That said, there's a Harley store right by the airport. 
just go look at some bikes. You know, we talk to ourselves, and I'm like, well, that sounds like a good idea. I'm not going to buy one, but that sounds like a good idea. Okay? So I walked into Harley Davidson, Orange County, and I'm introduced to a man named Bill who sells motorcycles. And so I'm talking to him. I'm talking to Bill, and I said, you know, I, I, I must be thinking about buying a bike, or why am I here? And he, he laughed. He goes, good point. And I said, but I guess what, I'm, what I've been thinking about lately is do I want a used bike or do I want a new bike? And he said, well, let me explain it this way. If you're a money guy, meaning if you're interested on saving money, if money's important to you, saving money, if you're interested in, in, in maybe selling it, fixing it up, if you're a money guy, I would move toward getting a used bike. And I've got a bunch of them here that are very beautiful. And I was looking at them, they are gorgeous. And he goes, now, if you're a bike guy, then I would recommend get a bike. Because you don't know how the bike was broken in, given somebody else owned it. And break-in period on a bike is very, very important to the future of the bike. So if you really are a bike guy, I'd recommend get a new one. And I'm like, you know what? I've never heard that perspective before. I like that perspective. So I said, okay, let's take the used bikes off the table because I am a bike guy. I love motorcycles. So now, I'm looking at these motorcycles. And I see one over here. You know, have you ever had that happen? The whole... Just gorgeous. And you know what? That picture came back in my mind of Steve McQueen on this beautiful motorcycle. And it was one very similar to that. I walked by it and look at the price. Mm, no, it was, it was for much over what I, somewhere in my mind said that if I buy another bike, here's what I'm going to spend. Oh, it was plenty over that. So I immediately set that picture off to the side, that bike off the side. And I'm looking at all these, right? And Bill's like, you know what, if you ever need any, if you need any help, just let me know. I'm like, okay, cool. So I'm looking at these bikes, and I'm, I, I, I take a peek at that one over there, and I'm looking at these bikes, and I take a peek at that one over there. He comes back out, and he goes, you're struggling, aren't you? And I said, yes. I don't, ah. He goes, what are you looking at? And I said, well, I like this one, except the style. I, I like this one. He goes, what other bike were you looking at? I said, that one over there. And he said, beautiful, isn't it? And I said, yeah. He goes, and these are too. He goes, let's go talk. So we went to his office, and this is what Bill said. And this is why I'm making this video partly, so if Bill's watching this, I'm going to send it to you anyway, Bill. But I want to thank you for this next thought. What Bill, and I don't know if Bill said this, but this is what Bill communicated, right? Was, yes, you can buy this bike right here, or you can buy that one over there that you really want. But just think about this. When you get off your bike that you buy, and you turn around and you look at that bike, make sure that you can say, that is a beautiful motorcycle. You know that word he used, right? Because he's just that way, right? If you cannot say that every time you get off of it, then what you're going to say is, I settled. Every time you look at it, it's a beautiful bike, but you settled. But you know what? You save $50 a month. Your choice. Save $50 a month. Know you settled every time you ride that bike. Or get off the bike you love and walk away from it, turn back and go, that is a beautiful. And have that thought in your mind every day when you ride it. Think about it. At that point, I was done. I was like, I had not seen it from that perspective before. Yes, I'd save a little bit of money. But in my mind, I knew I settled. And every time I looked at that bike, I would be reminded that I settled. And to have that settle thought in my mind every time I rode, that's not, that's not happy. That's not successful. And o over $50 a month. I wonder how much that would have cost me in business. I wonder how that cost me in my relationships, knowing I settled every day that I rode that bike. So now, I got it. I got the beast, and it is gorgeous. But not only that, is every time I do get on it, I knew I didn't settle. I went big. And I tell you what, if you adopt this idea, this formula, and do it in every area of your life, in your goals, not to settle. I don't know if you've ever heard this. Yeah, but what if you don't get it? So don't set it too big. Set it big. You know, when I went to my first personal development course in 1988, my boss said, you're going to set a goal on Saturday? Go big. Don't play small because you'll never know what you can create when you start using your mind a different way. 
And man, that sizzled into my brain too. You'll never know what you can create when you start using your mind a different way. And so when it came time for that goal setting, I set a goal to go find my father who left when I was four years old. I've never spoken to my father. And I set that goal on Saturday in my very first class in 1988. I found my father on Monday after the class. He was in a different state in the Midwest. I'm in California. My father's passing away. On Monday after my first class, and I went home, and I found him, and, I, and he stayed alive. It's not a Cinderella story. I have to be honest. He died. He died about a year later, but I got to know my father. And my point to this is I didn't sell on my goal. Did I want to? I, my first goal was to clean my garage and my small group. We're, we're, they were like, what? And I said, yeah, but I, I don't ever do that. So this is going to be a big risk for me. Oh, this is going to be a challenge. And one guy in my group wouldn't listen to it. He said, what else do you want? And I said, and I heard Ron's voice, dream big. And so I set that goal. And I've, I've been working on that. And sometimes have I settled through these years? Yes. And it's just bring, about being aware of it and shifting it, being aware of it. So here's the message. Don't settle. Go big. Go big in everything. And if we had time to go into this, every risk you take is positive. Now, the outcome might be what you wanted, but every risk is positive. Go big or go home. You've heard that before. Go big. So Tim O'Kelly signing out saying, if you want more, challenge your current perspective.